All right, so I just finished watching Boruto episode 215, and now this was the episode where the Leaf Village is pretty much preparing for Ishiki to attack, and it was a lot different from the manga, and I think that the anime did a really good job at using the extra minutes that they had to expand on some certain plot points that weren't really shown in the manga. Like for example, we have the conversation between Shikumaru and the Leaf Jonin, and that wasn't really something that happened in the manga and him sort of telling everybody that Ashiki's coming. But you know, when he tells them that he doesn't have a plan, you can kind of see the doubt in him and not sure if he can leave, but everybody's sort of trusting in him. And you know, there's also things like Sarada and Mitsuki that weren't necessarily shown in the manga, which Sarada and Mitsuki didn't actually get shown in the manga for like, I think a good bit. I think they're out for like a whole year. So I like that they're at least including them into some things and sort of incorporating other characters to the anime a little bit. And they do a really good job at explaining some other points like what Danzo's influence has been on the Leaf Village because there's this underground facility to where he actually built it for a Hayuga coop if that ever happened which i don't remember if they talked about in the manga i have to go back and check but man it seems like donzo has such a huge influence donzo he's been dead for a while but his influence still reigns on the leaf village so that's kind of crazy that he's been that relevant for this long yeah kind of what the events going on in this shiki and kashin koji just finished up their fight and kashin koji just escaped through his steam toad now i was wondering this for the preview when they showed Ashiki with the coat, but it turns out Ashiki just had that coat in the dimension for some reason. Yeah, after that whole scene and Kashin Koji escapes, Borto starts doubting his father because of the whole Jigen situation to where Naruto and Sasuke got destroyed by Jigen. And he's like, yo, I don't think you guys can do this alone. Can I help? And you know, Naruto's like, no, you can't do that. How do you know if your karma isn't going to have Momoshiki take over you? So there is a little bit of concern from Naruto there, which is why I think Naruto was not included into the conversation when Sasuke and Boruto had talked a little bit later. Naruto's not gonna let his son fight Ishiki, sort of like when he probably wouldn't be on board for the whole Momoshiki thing. It just kind of happened. So I can completely see where Naruto's coming from. Kind of going back to that whole point about the Jonin scene when they're all in that meeting hall talking to Shikamaru. There was even a point to where Shikamaru's even crying because, you know, they actually believe in him and will you know still fight for the leaf village which i mean most of them didn't actually fight it was just like five of them that actually fought that were main characters but you know it still was kind of moving to see that they have that kind of faith in shikamaru and before they even go off to fight ashiki kanaharmu has a scene talking to mugeno saying that he's ready to do the same thing that mugeno did for the Leaf Village, which, you know, kind of makes you think that Konoharmu is going to die, but that doesn't actually happen because they can't kill him off this early. But yeah, back to the conversation with Sasuke and Boruto. Boruto saying that he's scared that Momoshiki might take over and he'll hurt innocent people, but Sasuke reassures him that if Momoshiki takes you over again, then as your teacher, I'll have to stop you and might even have to kill you if that comes to it because he knows that Naruto would not be able to. So, you know, Sasuke taking on that responsibility and that burden to actually stop Boruto if worse came to worse, which does suck, but I mean, someone has to do it. And I feel like if anyone has to do it, I'm sure Sasuke is the one that would prefer to have it done by someone that Boruto would trust. Now, one little thing I noticed in this next scene with Shiki, if you notice how Shiki floats, he floats almost like godlike. Like you don't see his feet doesn't look like he has legs and i feel like it sort of represents him thinking he's above everybody i mean he technically is because he's in the sky but you know what i mean it feels like he's sort of like godly presence the osuki are better kind of feeling but i noticed that shiki also has a different approach for getting kawaki in the manga he was very pacifist he didn't want to really hurt anybody he didn't really care to but in the anime he's like i guess i'll just kill a couple people to see if they'll bring me Kawaki, which is a complete 180 from his whole pacifist route that he was doing in the manga. So I see that they did change that there. And then, you know, Konohamaru and the rest of the gang show up, Rock Lee, Choji, and the rest of them. They go to actually attack Ashiki and it goes horrible. They end up getting destroyed. And then, you know, Naruto comes to save the day. But shout out to Konohamaru for once again going up against Ashiki slash Jigen and trying to actually beat him so you know props to Konohamaru he almost died for like the sixth time but yeah now Shiki is sort of manhandling Naruto 
the two get to fighting and they're just destroying buildings and Sasuke suddenly shows up with a plan. Now, I thought it was kind of funny how this plan was because Ashiki was just sort of standing there when they were throwing the shurikens, but I was like, it's kind of funny that out of everything that we're doing, we're throwing shurikens at an Osuski, but you know, Sasuke has a plan with Boruto to basically have him pop up with the transformation juice to him teleport Shiki away which he didn't actually react to it because I guess he thought he could absorb sword what turned out to be Boruto and then Boruto took him to the other dimension and Sasuke then follows Boruto and Ashiki with his Renegon to travel which if you remember the Renegon actually takes up a good amount of chakra so I wonder if that's going to affect him in this fight but hey overall episode was pretty good I think they did the build up towards Ashiki very well how they have like everybody in the leaf village getting ready to die for the cause and i do like how that shikamaru scene was where they sort of entrust shikamaru with their life which says a lot about shikamaru's leadership and also the slight detail that sarada is still injured but you know misky because of, you know who he is is actually already healed up and whatever so do like those small little details there but yeah for the most part pretty good episode to give it like eight out of ten anyways let me hear your thoughts about the episode make sure to like comment and subscribe and join the Discord. Peace. Safe. Safe. Safe.